Today on Creative World, I'll be chatting with Obinna Chukubekim Dioni Nijono. At the moment, he is on a study leave in the UK, but he is a lecturer at the University of Nigeria in Suka. He is the author of Last Order, an expose of dangerous activities of fraternities in Nigerian universities. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, Alex. I am Alice. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind Last Order? Well, um, I would say, Alice, um, it's a bit of um, a long story. Three you know, our undergraduate days, there were lots of inter-fraternity confrontations and killings. I witnessed, and just like other Nigerians, seeing the lives of our youth being cut down. And I felt like something has to be done. And I believe that the pen is mightier than the sword. And I felt like I could use this medium to reach out to young stars in order to get them off the hook of deceptions of fraternities and the lies in it. Can we have a brief summary of what the Last Order is all about? Let's start from the name, Last Order. I've had a couple of people asking what's the meaning of the Order, O-D-A. It's just a slang that stands for Order, spelled O-R-D-E-R, -E the English word of Order, but that's what the slang in most fraternities. Actually, quite, I mean, quite a strong word there, that when it's given, it must be obeyed. So invariably, what I'm trying to say is that I'm giving all um, frat guys the Order to stop what they're doing, that they are derailing. The book focused on interfraternity confrontations, how they lure people into the groups, ways youngsters can avoid getting lured into the trappings of fraternity. And I use some characters, um, Jerry Oris, aka Hannibal, was used to depict the life of an average um, Nigerian um, undergraduate who got into the university, but along the line lost focus of his main purpose, which is academic pursuit and um, got lured into one of the fraternities and on getting there he realized that what he was told wasn't true. Fraternity wasn't a safe heaven but rather a battlefield where he must be looking behind his shoulders in order to survive. How do they lure an innocent person into this fraternities? Give an example. From my research there are lots of ways they can and I used character Jerry to show almost all the ways. One they can be friendly when you come in trying to be helpful as um a fresher, they take you to certain spots, make your registration go hassle free and show you some places, take you around, take you out, buy you drinks, introduce you to girls and stuff like that and before you know it, you're becoming friends with them, not knowing, you just seeing them as, I mean, cut sand until you get quite deep in it, then they will now tell you, for you to be benefiting from all these things, well, you have to do one or two things because this environment is a hostile one you have to be protected if you if you're not protected lots of things will start happening to you at times they can also use intimidation if they see some qualities in you which they believe they can harness they will start intimidating you making things um a bit difficult for you and most people got into this that way then i think some people as well intentionally tend to join them due to certain things the percep certain perceptions they have because they believe that these people or these um guys they are the bigger boys in the campuses and apparently this seems so only for you to get in there and um you see the other side of the coin and the other side of the coin is something else but then were you in the cult before and now that you do know that there's no good in it you decided to leave the cult and write about all the atrocities because it is real to life that's a nice question but hands on the chest i wasn't i would say that i was protected by god i was rather active in my church which is the catholic church i had I to come in certain positions in the church and probably that was what saved me from getting lured into the fraternity but then i had a couple of people um that you might suspect they have one or two things and they were the people that i actually got most of my information from when i was researching in the research how long did you take to do the research because i know that from reading this book i know that it isn't an easy thing even to do the research that's correct it took me a couple of years i started working on this book um in my third year in the university that should be in 2000 and while I was working, I used my spare time during hall strikes and um, at times within um, time time periods. And then I would be hiding. So it took quite a lot of um, time and um, hard work to get to the stage where. Finally, the last order is out. Who was the publisher? Oh, uh, my publisher uh, is based in the United States. Um, okay. A local publisher. Now the characterization. 
I would like to t maybe two, three characters. Why did you choose to give them the kind of characters you gave them? Everything I did about the walk, you mentioned that it being real to life. Because when I started walking, I felt like I need to do something. People will find it difficult differentiating the real thing I from the official. Real, that will make it, make it believable and um, people say so, yeah the message will get to the people so um the first character that's the major character jerry i'll give you a brief um of him jerry came into the university after having um some um negative experiences in the secondary school where he headed a gang a gang of bad boys and along the line he caught um rusticated from the secondary school he couldn't finish from the school he was in and that took him some time and sort of delayed him from getting admission because he has to go to another secondary school to finish off and then get into the university. When he got into the university, because of his experience at the secondary school, he felt like, well, I don't want anything to do with these people. I don't like them. They have had a lot of stories about them and my parents have warned me, if you get yourself involved in any of these things again, we will disown you. But incidentally, the first day he came, he ran into someone who appeared so friendly and was very helpful to him not knowing that he was um, a frat person and their friendship blows on but along the line people started warning him that this guy you're dealing with is bad but he couldn't believe because he was seeing the good aspect of him he wasn't seeing the bad aspect until it got so late a lot of things happened before he finally succumbed to the pressure of getting involved in the fraternity then when he got there he now saw the other side of it for him to rise he has to kill his way up and he wanted to rise so he started killing his way up and retaliation started coming because once you start killing well you're killing other people from other fraternities they will come back for you so it became so difficult and worrisome for him he was virtually looking behind his shoulders every he was restless he wasn't um, and his um, academic um pursuit was declining as these things were going on until he got to the top but he ended up being killed at the end of it the second character i used was um tony who i gave the nickname katanga he was used to defeat um, the other side of um, nigerian students that intentionally joined these groups due to perceived benefits but his life in the book also portrayed that there is no gain in fraternities always has a disastrous end if i use that word then i also tried to depict certain academic corruption in the university like um, lecturers um, victimizing female students and um, all the rest and I capitalized on that because they are using this weakness of the lecturers to get to them because they know they love girls and they try to do some things with them so they were using it as a way of eliminating them as well use some characters to depict them um, the affiliation if I will use that word or the network connecting these um, frats boys to academic um, authorities and some politicians and how they tend to have a symbiotic relationship you help me you rub my back i rub your back and um lastly there was a bit about police well i tried to use the book to touch virtually every aspect of our polity using certain innuendos and undertones to link these things up but the central message was about um cultism and um is some um, dangerous implication finally at the end of the book what do you think are the key messages you have in the book that can help others outside before they get into the universities well no evil deed goes unpunished and um we just saying is that i try to introduce them um, each path with certain quotations from either the bible or certain notable individuals like um martin luther king chino things he said about and um, violence not being the way out so my message is that the original aim of formation of these groups in the early 50s has been thwarted they Can you don't tell us what the original aim is and what it's been thwarted into okay according to the pirates who started this thing in 1953 or thereabout 52 or thereabouts they formed it allegedly to fight academic corruption elitism and social injustice they felt that we are youngsters we're academics, we can use our position to change things, to form, it's more or less like an opposition group that could kick against certain rules that are not favorable to the students and the nation in general. But then, things got out of hand when acrimony crept into the fraternity and um, they started disintegrating. So, a lot of fraternities came up and the original aim of collectively fighting social injustice was thwarted. Instead of fighting social injustice, they started fighting each other because now it became a battle for supremacy. I am the better fraternity than yours. 
and how do you show you're the better fraternity? Well, if I can kill more of you when we are in a battle, then that means I, I have the powers. I command the institution. And this is quite contrary to what is obtainable elsewhere. In United States, you have um, fraternities as well that started from the university and still operating the universities, things like Skulls and Bone. They've um, recorded or in their history. Some United States presidents have been members of this fraternity. I think they've used it to develop their nation because it's sort of, what have you done for the country, this fraternity? Well, Skull and Bone, we've done this. Um, this other ones, you've done that. But that is not what we have at the moment. What we have at the moment is that people are fighting for supremacy and that has led into other situations. Because once you start killing, you kill for the fraternity, it won't cost you anything to kill for money. So certain individuals can give you money to go and kill some other person. So you start getting people...